Am I audible? Am I audible? Yeah. So, so in case you want to see the back of the T-shirt, that's that's this. Thing. All right. Uh, I'm switched on. Hopefully. All right. So, so my talk is going to be about uh, the futuristic, cutting-edge innovation of the leveraging of synergy between personal time optimization and the value proposition of extracurricular activities. So that's going to be the subject of my talk, uh, or as I like to put it, sh in short. I clarify, I clarify. So, 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 it's deliberately provocative, but I'll sort of clarify. So, uh, very briefly, this is me. And uh, contrary to what a lot of people think, I do have a day job. Uh, I actually head a research lab at TCS, and, uh, and the good part is that I love my job so much that it, uh, there's, there's really no difference between the sort of things I do at work versus the stuff I do outside of work. So. Uh, that's what keeps me sort of driven. So uh, this is a small tag cloud of some of the things that interest me. And uh, so I want to start with, uh, before getting down to sort of speaking about hobbies and, and the, the main subject itself, I want to sort of speak to you about uh, creativity and humor in general. So uh, this is not like a humor 101 course or anything. This is general stuff that, that I, the way I look at it, right? So. Uh, there's, several, there's several different kinds of humor, and, and, and the first kind, at least for me, is, and, and uh, something that I do often, is mixing the old and the new. Right? So the mixing the old and the new is, is, uh, is very interesting to me. Uh, in the sense that, so if you remember Amachitra Katha, this is actually the scene where Karna gets uh, cheated by Arjuna because his chariot is stuck and you, know, you have this Arjuna going to kill him. And uh, the, the dialogues themselves are actually from the movie 300, right? So this is madness, this is Partha, right? So, uh, and uh, so the other thing is that there's also this, uh, there's also good fun in mixing pop culture and tradition, popular culture and tradition. And there's a reason for that. The reason for that, the reason for that is that tradition rarely likes popular culture, right? So, so tradition tends to sort of say that anything new is actually bad. So in some sense, a while back, I invented this character called Darth Vadyar, who, who's a metaphor for all things that are sort of, is a metaphor for excessively opinionated people who are stuck in a time war, right? And this is not just old people. This is not just people, you know, who sort of say, oh, back in my days, the Carnatic musicians were much better than today. And you know, people tend to say, you know, uh, the sound of the LP was much better than the sound of the CD. And you'll sort of people hearing things like that. But what's interesting is, that it's, it's not just, it's not just uh, old people today. All of us, when we grow up, we'll all have our own sort of uh, pet ways of looking at this. So, all right. Is there audio going on? So that's the uh, the Imperial March, uh, played with Gamagam, etc., and three Sangha. This is sort of like a it's a theme song for uh, the Darth Vadyar. So the interesting thing is uh, that it's it's not just it's very easy for us to look at old people and say, oh, you know what? Hey, they're stuck in their own time warp, and you know we're stuck in this whole modern thing. Trust me, when we all grow old, we will all have those same biases. We'll, we'll all have the same sort of what I call tech nostalgia, which is to be attached to the sort of stuff that you are comfortable with. Right? So I'm dead sure, you know, when we are 70 years old, we'll say that back in our days, right, when, when all kids are now on this here totally new cool social network, we'll say back in those days, we used to do Facebook. It used to be so nice. Nowadays, kids do this, some nonsense and things like that. So, so everybody, sort of, everybody tends to do that. So it's very important to sort of laugh at yourself. So. Uh, so the next, uh, the next sort of thing uh, in terms of mixing the old and the new is the Darth Vadyar metaphor actually stands for people who uh, oppose, uh, who tend to be conservative. Right? So, and and when, when you're conservative, it's always worth laughing at. Right? So, and so, this is, so, this is, uh, so this is Botticelli's Venus. Uh, this is actually sort of an Indian painting. And the, and, and the Darth Vadyar way of thinking about things is that that's very indecent, so therefore we must Indianize it. 
So therefore, we must clothe her. So this is. So this is. Uh, so the next thing is, of course, uh, the Mona Lisa itself. For example, because clearly there's several problems. She's a married woman. <laughs> So she's a married woman who's not wearing bindi, she's, you know, let her hair loose and, uh, and she's wearing no thali, which is completely unacceptable in the eyes of the Darth Vadiar sort of person, right? So, so therefore, uh, we need to do this, right? So this is good fun, I mean, in a sense. So that sort of brings me to this point about the third sort of place where I find humor, which is male chauvinism. Uh, we're essentially a very male-centric society, and we've been for the last, well, ever since, you know, the age of apes, we've been male-centric. And things are changing very rapidly in like the last 20, 30 years or so. So, when you laugh at male the only way to get rid of something or let something go is to be able to laugh at it. So that's, that's the reason why I usually pick male chauvinism as a topic. And this is something that I'd, I'd done a long time back, you know. Uh, this is essentially, uh, uh, we were making Bisi Belabad, and I felt that there's, there's some way we could actually probably sort of do a series of cartoons based on the vegetables as characters themselves. So this is basically a bunch of beans uh, that's sort of Eve teasing a bunch of spicy hot chilies. <laughs> right? So, so, so the chili actually says, have you no shame? Were you not also born in a pistol? Was she also not female? It's so a basically botanical way of sort of uh, doing this, right? So. Right. The other place where I like to find humor in, uh, is, is essentially contemporary absurdity. And again, this is, this is in, I'll, I'll sort of explain. So, so the most, uh, <laughs> so I actually published a step-by-step a -step method on how to design political posters, right? I mean, it's, you know, Photoshop is cheap. It costs zero because you can always pirate it and things like that. So there's, there's people who, uh, right, so, so let me explain. Interestingly enough, my, my wife suggested all these poses and she was the one who took the photos actually, so just so you know. Uh, but, but there's something else here. So it's easy for us to laugh at, at the political posters and these political characters and say, oh, look at the way they sort of you know, promote themselves cheaply, etc. I mean, don't we go on Facebook and pick up best looking photographs to put on the profile? Don't we go uh, and get scared every time somebody tags a very ugly looking photo of you? Don't you go and remove the tag from there? So, we're, we're, all, we're, all, we're all show offs at some level. So it's just that it's important to laugh at it sometimes. So, uh, right, so, the, so that brings me to the last thing, which is, which is in the context of where we are today, uh, it's important to understand the power of remixing. Uh, it's, not just, it's not just taking two songs, you know, an MGR song and putting a beat on it. That's, that's not remix, right? So cultural remixing itself is a way for you to look at issues in fundamentally new and interesting ways. Uh, in some cases, it might be trivial and worth a few laughs and jokes, etc. But really, but when you start remixing, you start thinking seriously. And uh, the reason I, I sort of brought all of this up is that most of the stuff that I do is possible primarily because we live today in an era where technology is so easy. It takes me less than half an hour to do something on Photoshop, about a couple of hours to do something with music on GarageBand. Or uh, record something or draw some cartoons and scan them and so and and actually learn to do all of this by watching videos like TED or YouTube etc so it's a very interesting so so remixing is something that's fundamental so I want to show you a couple of examples of some of the things that we did uh, so this is a MP3, AAC, MP4, AIF, MOV, MPG, Yella format Kalilum. So anyway, so so that was so that was essentially an Apple radio ad. If you if you've heard these 1980s radio ads, right? So they sort of sound like this. So so that was uh, and something more interesting. <laughs> Tamil, 
So the interesting, the interesting story behind that was, uh, for me, for me, for me, the, the character of T. Rajendra, as I don't see him as is an individual. I, if, as far as I am concerned, he's an inspiration in a very different way. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Because. Because he has, there's nothing fake about him. He's, he's out there and he says, this is the talent I have and I, I will show this to you. And I will, I will say what I mean with a frankness and candid candor that other people generally don't have. So as far as I, I'm, I'm not actually parodying him. So we, we actually took it seriously. So there's another remix that we did uh, where we put the Radia tapes of A. Raja speaking with Neera Radia and also had TRO, you know, sort of uh, go against them. But, but uh, so, so that's, that's another way of sort of remixing uh, Taking something from the public domain and sort of using auto tune, etc. So, so this is a this is this is another thing that uh, we have a bunch of friends. We meet every week at a studio, and uh, and we get these wild ideas there for you know mixing things. And so we were eating at a restaurant, and we sort of noticed that Italian food items actually sound like uh, a particular sort of religious devotional song that I'd heard before. So. So we said, we'd, let's compose, a, I, I really like Italian music, so I want to compose a devotional, bhakti-filled, sort of Italian, uh, this thing to... I sangiling vini fokka chakya palini pizza fetu chini lasagna tene Spina cingole ne si pesto pine stoni canalo ne porfilio asparagi Ravillo di specchetti Alfredo pescatore fresco pomodoro tagliatele Tira mi su arrabbiata farfalle stagioni calzone gamberi peperoncini ai frutti di mare quattro formaggi o risotto con pollo pesana roma napoletana fagioli alla cieca gorgonzola no chica bonara so, so that was essentially, we just took the, the, a menu of a restaurant in Chennai, uh, an Italian restaurant, and we just rearranged the words so that it sort of sounded like this. Uh, and so this is one thing that I want to do before I move on to the main part of, you know, sharing some ideas on what I think uh, people uh, need to do, etc. So this is, this is something that nobody has seen yet. Uh, so this is, so in a sense, it's an TEDx, S, a TEDx SSN exclusive. Uh, so we have this band called Paradise Noise, right? So, so this is so this is this is actually T R speaking Hindi, right? So this is. प्यार तो उनका जूता है जो जिसको भी चाहत करते हैं सच्चा प्यार उन्हें क्या है जो दिल को भी मरते हैं दिल जो दिल जो किसी को दे दिया लौट के फिर वो आता नहीं जिसको कभी प्यार किया उसको बुलाया जाता नहीं. So so sort of explain what I did. I took something. Uh, there's, there's this piece of software called Melodyne that allows you to take audio clips. Uh, it's primarily used to fix singers who can't seem to keep up pitch and all that. But then the interesting use is you can take any voice recording and turn it into music, right? So I can actually sort of set the note of each word. And so what we did first is... So, so, and then we, we took a couple of other clips, and so we, we, this is still a work in progress, but this is what we have so far. So yeah. so I'll, I'll leave the presentation, so in, in, in the interest of time, so I'll move on. So yeah, so now I want to get to the main part of my presentation, which is the last couple of slides, where I want to sort of share my ideas on why I do what I do. Uh, in some sense, the first thing is that it's important to remember that, you know, uh, people will often berate remixing uh, in the sense of, but fundamentally everything is a remixing. Everything is actually a remixing. So if you really look at 
Uh, culture is always derivative. It's basically stuff that people do over the years. It always keeps changing. So in, in that sense, um, if you go to a Carnatic classical concert, I, I mean, I have an aunt who tells me, who listens to all of this stuff, and he says, you know, why are you wasting your time doing these things? Why don't you do pure Carnatic classical music? Uh, what do you think a Carnatic artist is doing when he's going performing somebody else's song written 200 years ago, interpreted in his own way, but for most part still mostly sounds like what that other guy meant? It is a remix. Every time you perform somebody else's work, it is a remix. It's just the way you look at it. So, so that's one thing. Uh, but this brings me to the main point, which is that I believe that we're, we're moving into what I call the hobby era. Right? Um, and I think this is important. Uh, so we, we come from a time where you couldn't afford to do hobbies you know, when after your class 9 or class 10. Or at some point, in time you'll keep sort of giving up hobbies uh, because you have to focus on your main uh, vocation, and so you really couldn't afford it. But, but the fact that there's the internet and there's, there's access to tools and there's access to such easy creativity and the ability to link with other people, like-minded people, and sort of jam online uh, is what is really interesting. So uh, as we've seen, we're also moving towards an era where creativity is more and more important than ever. When I joined IT 10 years ago, it was, it was, it was reasonably challenging. It's not so challenging anymore. People tend to do sort of very, very routine kind of work. So the ones who tend to grow are the people who have creative skills. And, and in my opinion, uh, creativity in other spaces always rubs off on, 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 on the thing that you want to be good at. So the first thing is the notion that the best way for a human being to enjoy his life is to specialize in one thing is patently ridiculous. Right? Uh, I, you know, just, just a simple fact, Art, I make almost as much from writing columns and doing all these other hobbies as I do from my main job. So it's just that if you're good at multiple things, I think you should be good at multiple things. And so do not ever give up your hobbies. And there's absolutely no reason to. If you've given up your hobbies, take it back up again. Because it's, you will, the, it, despite people telling you that it's bad, you will find that, that it, is, it is completely crucial to, to what, you, what you're going to be doing. So, and it's important to quit your job or role. Because see, I have, a, I have a role that I love so much that it gives me the ability to sort of uh, do indulge in all my hobbies. right? So it's very important to remember that. You need to quit when you're not doing something that you like. There is also a certain joy in the creative process itself. I think it totally refreshes your mind when I sit with people and uh, dream up of things like the Italian stotram or you know, the, the Venkatesa Suprabhatam set to Mexican food or whatever it is. It's, it's just there's a certain immense amount of fun uh, associated with that process. The other thing most people don't do is differentiate between life and livelihood. Right? For me, uh, life is you know, going out with my wife, you know, seeing places, uh, spending time with dogs, going out with kids, and doing all those sorts of fun things. And my livelihood is what pays for all of that. That's my day job. It's very important to distinguish that. Right? And don't just respect your elders. Respectfully disagree with them. It's, it's very, very important. Right? Uh, you need to be able to question the choices that are being forced down on you. And the last thing, talent essentially is nothing. I'm not, I'm not any more talented than any of you guys. Right? I just have a certain amount of manic obsession in what I do. And, and I seem to find the time to do it. So time plus obsession is really what is talent. Right? So if you can't find both, that's really what it is. And thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.